Yeah. We are back on Morning Line. It's uh, our pleasure to have with us this morning Dr. Calvin Smith from over at Meharry. He's terrific, talking about some of the latest developments with regard to COVID. And uh, we just touched bases on vaccines. Mm -hmm. They're coming. Now's the time to go get them. If you're six to nine months out from your last shot or if you have a pre-existing condition that makes you more at risk. By the way, it's real interesting. I didn't know this. Uh, the, this next shot you're going to get is exactly the same as the other shots you got. It's just a booster. Just a booster. Just a booster on that. I uh, want to ask you on this, too. Um, when you we get the shots now, you're protected. Nothing's 100% guaranteed. We right. do hear of some breakthrough cases. Right. But and so people are saying, well, uh, there's breakthroughs. But the big deal is if you have the vaccine and breakthroughs are going to happen. Yes. What does it mean? It means that because you've had the vaccine, the illness will not be as bad. That's correct. So your immune system is just a little bit stronger uh, having seen and been exposed to the vaccine than it would be without the vaccine. Okay. And so with that being the case, even if you're exposed to it, number one, it greatly reduces the risk of the, the virus being able to invade your cells. But if they do happen to invade your cells, it's going to be a short invasion. It's not going to be uh, nearly as protracted as it would be, especially if you were already prone to being really sick with it. Uh, what we notice is that some people who probably probably would have died mm -hmm. are, are surviving. Some people who probably would have had severe illness are not having to go to the hospital. Yeah. And some people who might have had just mild illnesses don't have any symptoms at all. And so it's kind of stepwise in terms of that. Gotcha. Let's take a few phone calls. We'll go to Barbara. Barbara, good morning. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Hey, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, yes, I, I'm going to be due for my next vaccination, the third one, about November. And that's usually the time I get my uh, flu shot mm -hmm. and my uh, pneumonia shot. Mm -hmm. Will those, like, counteract each other, or should I space them out a certain amount? Or Great question. Or yeah, flu shot time. Yeah, we got to talk about the flu. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that call. That's a fantastic question. Actually, from everything that we know right now, there's no need to space out these shots. You can get, uh, much like we would do with kids, get multiple shots One or two, in the same three day. In a row, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't think that based on the literature right now that there's anything to say that you shouldn't uh, get those shots on the same visit the same day. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to talk real briefly about the flu because uh, if you noticed last year, the flu was conspicuously absent. Yes. We didn't see a whole lot of flu cases. I wonder why. People mm. were washing their hands, wearing their wearing masks. masks. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that the flu vaccine also helps a great deal. Mm. Uh, the flu is a, a much different kind of bug than, than the COVID. Yeah, the COVID shot is not going to uh, protect you from flu, will it? No, They're it two won't. separate shots. Two separate shots. But with that being said, you know, you don't want to be uh, in the, the mix of thinking, oh, man, is this COVID? Is this flu? You know, like that kind of deal. And you don't, you certainly don't want to be down with both of those at the mm -hmm. same time. That would certainly be a lot of burden on the oh, immune yeah. system. So uh, certainly, you know, even if you still have some reservations about the COVID, which I mean, from a scientific standpoint, there's not a whole lot of reason to have a whole lot of uh, um, uh, con concern about it. But if you still do, uh, I still strongly encourage you to get the flu vaccine uh, and, and really do the same things you did last flu season because we had record low numbers. That was and awesome. Number, it's, you know, I mean, the numbers are there. The science is there. I was healthiest last year than I have been in years. And what I mean by this is because we really had limitations here at the station. They did a great job with it. Mm -hmm. I was wearing a mask, washing my hands, not around as many people. Every year, I get at least one bad head cold or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't get one last year. And it's because of all this. Now, I know yeah. things are opening up again. I anticipate I've already had a sinus infection this year. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think that's the way to do it. So get the flu shot. Have you heard anything at all about this season's flu? I know they look at Asia sometimes, and they get a guess whether or not it's going to be a, a, a worse type of flu this year compared to other years any word on that at all no word as yet uh you know and that's somewhat concerning to me because usually around this time i have some way to advise a lot of my patients who are immunocompromised as to how you know what they should be on the lookout for yeah um, but i haven't heard anything about any cases one way or the other whether the flu season is going to be severe or not uh, and okay. I think a lot of that is in large part to the fact that even in Asia they had such lower numbers that we just don't really have the 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 the, uh, the volume of cases to look at, right? Which is good and bad. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it makes it a little bit more unpredictable. Um, that being said, the science behind the flu vaccine is is so well studied and so well. Like at this point, we kind of are in a routine with it, and with the hand washing and, and masking and everything like that. I mean, I don't anticipate it making a resurgence. Uh, I pray to God it doesn't happen because. We certainly don't need that on top of Yeah, you're right. And someone getting both of those would just be devastating. Let's go to uh, next is uh, Jane. Jane, good morning. Hi, Jane. Hi, how are you? Good. What's on your mind? Uh, I'd like to know why I haven't seen any of the medical professionals on television talk about uh, ways to strengthen your immune system, uh, such as eating antiviral foods. 
uh, which I've been doing for over nine years, and I haven't been sick in over nine years. But, you know, nobody's talking about eating antiviral foods or taking supplements. They're just talking about the vaccine. Okay, yeah, let's talk about some of those. Sure. I, I, I'm not sure where exactly she comes from, if she chooses to go that route instead of a vaccine, but but I certainly think there are things, right, that you yeah. can eat that, that strengthen your immune system, maybe coupling that with the vaccine. Well, I think she's right, and, and, and to her credit, we don't do enough on the preventative yeah. end to talk about things, okay. and I think it's because we are in this, uh, this, this emergent pandemic sense, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. where the horse is out of the barn, so to speak, but to her point, to prevent people from becoming ill, yes, a good healthy diet, uh, she referred to as antiviral, things like high in antioxidants, mm -hmm. uh, vitamin C. We certainly are seeing people with low vitamin D mm -hmm. are faring much worse than people without uh, the, that issue. So okay. making sure that you get a good uh, healthy balanced diet with vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, getting some sunlight, some real activated sunlight, not the filtered sunlight from the windows, but actually going out to, even if you're like quarantined, going out to the balcony or your doorstep and just getting some good sunlight for about 15 minutes will activate that vitamin D and mm -hmm. will help protect you. Uh, but to her point, I mean, I think that, yes, we do need to do a better job of, uh, of advocating for healthy habits prior to getting sick. Yep. So eating a good balanced diet. Uh, and, and, you know, if we're eating a balanced diet, I like to use that word specifically because a balanced diet is going to contain just about everything that we need to be healthy. Um, and that includes those antioxidants. That includes vitamin C. Um, but those things will only serve a certain measure of protection. Uh, and certainly, if you've never been exposed to a, a virus before, mm -hmm. that virus can overwhelm even the healthiest immune system, uh, depending on the circumstances. So, yeah. you know, but you give yourself your best chance to fight it. Yeah, I, my wife, I think, is, is like her. She yeah. takes good care of herself and very rarely gets sick. And I'll be honest, yeah, I, I get a flu shot every year. I always have. My wife hasn't, and mm -hmm. she's never gotten the flu. And so it stood up. But when it came to COVID, there was no question in her mind. She went and got the vaccine for that. Yeah. And because she sees it as very different. I just want to be clear that there have been stories, uh, and I know of someone individually who said, well, I can handle COVID. I'm going to take uh, um, you know, zinc tablets, vitamin D, lots of vitamin C, and I'll be able to fight this off. And that person died. Okay. I, I want to be real clear that what she's suggesting here, while helpful, is not going to save you if you get COVID yeah. and um, or protect you. From, that it's not a substitute for a vaccine. That's absolutely correct. Okay, let's yeah. just be real clear. And so, she may disagree with me. I'm sorry, then I disagree with her. Uh, <laughs> it, the bottom line is, vitamin C and D is not a substitute for the vaccine. Sure, I think all of it is here for us and, and neglecting any one part of it, especially the vaccine, is tantamount to you know, ignoring the other end. Like it, you're doing all this, you're building up all this immunity and then not bolstering it. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me if, if the science is behind it, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And the science is certainly behind it in this case. Yeah, well, like I, I, I do what she says. I try to eat those foods and stuff. I've got the vaccine. So I know if I'm a breakthrough case or something, I'm hoping what I end up having is a very mild kind of feverish feeling and I get better in a day or two. That's yeah. my fingers crossed on that. Yeah, is really, 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 really high that it won't be severe. Yeah, and that's good. that's that's a relief for so many people. That's yeah. why I just don't understand why people don't get you know the vaccine. We'll talk more about why they don't when we come back too. We'll take calls from Ron and Shirley and others right after this. Stay with us. Back with more with Dr. Calvin Smith.